Hey everyone, back again. Today I want to talk about the distinction between Eshin Bembe's idea of necropolitics and Michel Foucault's notion of biopolitics. But before jumping into it, hi, I'm David. I explain philosophical concepts and ideas and ways to make them accessible to you. Accessible, accessible to you. So if you're new here, you can subscribe and see videos I release every week, sometimes twice a week, like this week. If you want to follow me anywhere else, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, links for all such things in the description. If you like what I do, you can like, share, subscribe. If you want to help me out, you can do it monetarily via Patreon or PayPal. No pressure to do that. If you found this on YouTube, you're going to be able to find it as just a podcast on pretty much any platform with under all the same names and stuff. If you found this as a podcast, you're going to be able to find the video on YouTube, which is cool, of course. So without further ado, let's get into the distinction between Foucault's notion of biopolitics and Bembe's notion of necropolitics. Now I'm going to start with Foucault because chronologically it's first and Bembe is responding to Foucault. So that makes sense. So Foucault's notion of biopolitics, super interesting, fascinating term, and one that he gets lots of credit for, even though he didn't write about it a whole lot. It's actually super interesting to me, even in his text, The Birth of Biopolitics, one of his lectures at the Collège de France, he barely writes about it at all. Instead, he just writes about its history or like what led up to it. Now, what actually did lead up to it? Foucault tells us that biopolitics emerges at a point in which state power transforms into individual power, where we see instead of people submitting to states and royalty and religion and everything like that, they begin to embrace individualism or liberalism which would eventually culminate into neoliberalism, which on its face appears to be a radical departure from previous forms of control that people experienced under states, under royal dynasties, under religious control. And instead they were opened up only to their own desire, their own will to provide for themselves. And of course this dovetails with various economic developments, really the formation of capitalism in the 18th and 19th centuries that allowed people to ostensibly live their lives the way that they wanted to, free from restraint, free from control. However, it's not actually quite so neat as that, nor is it quite as liberating as that narrative makes us think. Instead, Foucault identifies that the types of control that were found under these previous forms of governance, like states or royalty or whatever, transformed. They did not disappear. Instead, they found their ways into our very sense of ourselves to the point that they became indistinguishable from the creation of ourselves as individuals, as atomized, self-sufficient identities floating in the world, which might seem totally strange. I mean, you think of yourself as a free individual living on the rugged land, free to do whatever you'd like, away from control. You can go to school if you want to. You can participate in government if you want to. You can vote if you want to. But underlying all of these supposed choices are rigid constraints that go unnoticed. Some of these might include your adherence to various ideas about diet, maybe, or your adherence to various ideas about what it means to be a proper upstanding citizen or what it means to have a relationship with your family, your friends, what it means to actually have a relationship with knowledge, with the acquisition of knowledge. So Foucault says that at this time in the 18th and 19th centuries when we see this idea of liberalism emerge, also emerged various new kinds of control and understandings that were applied against human conduct. So more rigorous understandings of what it meant to actually be a human emerged it didn't necessarily reflect a neutral observation and scientific deduction about what it means to be human, but actually was an imposition of what it means to be human, how to be a proper ethical human, how to exist in the world properly, what rules can be broken, whose interests can you struggle for and whose can you not struggle for. So we saw the emergence then of various institutions like prisons that began to lock people away in mass numbers, where we saw 
mental asylums emerge that created and really rift off the idea of an emerging normality, normalcy, normal conduct. And if you deviated from that norm, you would be sent to prison. So Foucault identifies that even though there is this dream of liberalism, people are still being controlled. Now, one of the overarching terms to really understand this type of control is biopolitics, which is a type of control that focuses on people's livelihoods, people's lives, extending lives, and manipulating those lives as a means of control instead of exerting force to cause physical pain against people, to put people to death, which still goes on, but in any case, we'll get to that, to put people to death, to scare people, which Foucault says is not a very efficient form of control. Because if you have like kings and queens putting people to death, what that does is very easily communicate to the people who has control, which makes it very easy then for the people to say, oh, if I just overthrow these people in power, then everything will be good. Now, power doesn't really want that. Power wants to remain, remain opaque. It wants to hide in the shadows and really creep in when it's most efficient, when it's most convenient for it. So it, biopolitics, exerts its control not through force in a way that actually causes harm, but instead that directs people as specific populations. So it introduces new kinds of mapping and understanding, categorizing people in certain ways in order to clump them together to better know how to control them. Take advertising, for example. Advertising is targeted to you, specifically you as an individual. You receive your certain ad on your social media platform, but the only reason that that ad has actually arrived to you is because an algorithm, a certain kind of knowledge has been deployed that clumps you into a category that makes you susceptible or makes you appropriate for that ad. And in doing so, it shapes your wants, it shapes your needs, and drives you in a certain direction. It doesn't punish you yet it is still a type of control. It puts you on a path that is not your own, yet makes you think that it is your own. I mean, you choose to click on the ad, you choose to buy this new thing, you choose to have, you know, submit to this diet or whatever. Now, it's a very seductive idea. I mean, I think that Foucault is right about a lot of this, but along comes Shinbembe, and he suggests that, well, how is this really possible? I mean, this type of system in which these individuals are allowed to flourish and liberalism is allowed to flourish. Well, really quite simply, it was permitted because of slavery, of colonization, of economic exploitation of people all across the world that allowed certain parts of the world and certain people to enjoy the benefits of an economic system that ostensibly allowed them to be these free floating individuals existing for their own will or by their own will. So Mbembe suggests that instead of submitting to this idea of biopolitics as being this homogenous, all-encompassing idea to understand power relations today, we have to also leave room to understand that there is still rampant violence that goes on, mostly against people of color, people living in the third world, and that is specifically targeted in such a way as to maintain the privilege of certain people, notably white Europeans mostly. So rather than thinking about these old forms of power as Foucault does as, go as disappearing and this new kind of power emerging, Mbembe instead identifies that sovereign power, sovereignty still very much exists today. And it is decided upon and it is determined by who gets to choose who gets to live and who gets to die, who gets to wage wars in countries in the Middle East, who gets to open up a new factory in Bangladesh and use it to economically exploit women and children there. So instead of thinking in this glossy way of power relations having transformed and become more benevolent, which is not something Foucault would say. He would say that they've become, it's become more efficient, it's become more pernicious in that way. Mbembe really wants to leave room for necropolitics to suggest that it's not just about life, extending life and controlling life. It is actually about very much as well, 
ending life, certain life, especially down racial lines where some people can just die in order to uphold the norm. And certainly down gender lines as well. If you look at any statistic, you know that gender-based violence occurs, like 94% of gender-based violence cases is men inflicting violence against women. And this happens all the time. And this is rampant violence that upholds a certain status quo, a hierarchic relation that is reminiscent of those of bygone eras of patriarchal control. We haven't moved into this new kind of purely efficient control. Instead, what we are seeing is old forms of control really sustain their old power in their exertion of force and violence in doing so, and then using that to keep themselves afloat, to sustain these power relations, to sustain these hierarchies. Now these do so in order to maintain in order to create and maintain what he calls death worlds, zones in which people are just going to be at the constant threat of death. And we can really extend this as well all throughout the colonial regimes that Europe established all throughout Africa and Southeast Asia, all, really all across the world that inflicted violence against millions of people. So yeah, it's important, I think, in my own opinion, to you know, we can sympathize with Foucault, we can identify that we can really celebrate his observation that there is this new kind of control that emerged with the advent of liberalism, but that it doesn't mark a total departure from previous forms of control as they exerted themselves in terms of violence, especially how this violence is exerted against people of color, color all across the world. So we can, I think, really hold both to be true, both what Foucault says and Mbembe says, really this is what Mbembe says. He says that we have to maintain both. But I want to know what you think. Are you on a side? How do you actually reconcile these two perspectives? I would love to hear about it. If you like what I did, like, share, subscribe. And I'll catch you next time. Take care.